Hi everyone, in this video, today we're going to be solving AQA GCSE Chemistry Higher Tier Paper 1. Today we're solving June 2022. This is the part 1 video where we're going to be solving from question number 1 to question number 5. This question is about metals and non-metals. Figure 1 shows an outline of the periodic table. In the figure, we can see that the periodic table is divided into four different sections. Element Q is a dull solid with melting point of 44 degrees Celsius. A dull solid indicates a non-metal, and low melting point also indicates that it is a non-metal. Element Q does not conduct electricity, so not conducting electricity further confirms that it is a non-metal. Which section of the periodic table in figure 1 is most likely to contain element Q? Element Q can be found in the D block, so D will be the answer. Element R forms ions with R2 plus and R3 plus. This indicates variable oxidation state. Variable oxidation state is a property of transition element. Which section of the periodic table in figure 1 is most likely to contain R? So this should be B. Give two differences between physical properties of the elements in group 1 and those of transition element. Group 1 elements have lower melting point. Group 1 elements have lower densities. Group 1 elements are less strong. They're not so hard. They're soft metals. All right. Or we can say group 1 elements are softer. Complete figure 2 to show the electronic structure of aluminium atom. Aluminium belongs to group 3 and it has a proton number of 13. So it will be 283. Aluminium is a metal. Describe how metals conduct electricity. Answer in terms of electron. So any metallic structure have delocalized electrons in them. So those delocalized electrons, they are able to carry charge. And then the delocalized electrons are also able to move through the structure, or in this case, aluminum metal. And thus they can conduct electricity. Name the type of bonding in compounds formed between metals and non-metals. So metals and non-metals, they bond by giving and taking of electrons. So it will be ionic compound. Magnesium oxide is a compound formed from metal magnesium and the non-metal oxygen. Describe what happens when a magnesium atom reacts with an oxygen atom. You should refer to electrons in your answer. So basically, magnesium is a metal. So what it does, it loses two electrons and oxygen is a non-metal. It gains two electrons. So magnesium forms Mg2 plus ions and oxygen forms O2 minus ions. And basically two electrons are transferred between them. Sodium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid in an exothermic reaction. The equation for the reaction is given below. Sodium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid producing sodium chloride along with carbon dioxide gas and water. A student investigated the effect of changing the mass of sodium carbonate powder on the highest temperature reached by the reaction mixture. Plan a method to investigate effect of changing the mass of sodium carbonate powder on the highest temperature reached. So to answer this particular question, the student can measure a fixed volume of hydrochloric acid using a measuring cylinder. So the volume can be 25 cm cube or 50 cm cube. Then the student can pour the hydrochloric acid into a suitable container. Example will be a polystyrene cup. The reason why we're using polystyrene cup because you know it doesn't uh, gain heat energy from surroundings or lose heat energy to surroundings. Okay, measure the initial temperature of hydrochloric acid with a thermometer. Once the initial temperature is known, then let's say, for example, five grams of sodium carbonate is added. All right, this five grams of sodium carbonate is you know, measured using a balance. And then once the sodium carbonate is added, then the solution is tired and the highest temperature reached is measured. Then the same process is repeated with different masses of sodium carbonate. And the whole investigation is repeated for each mass of sodium carbonate at least three times. So if we use the same starting temperature, and same volume of hydrochloric acid each time with same concentration of hydrochloric acid, this will be a really fair experiment. Figure 3 shows the line of best fit through the student's result. Mass of sodium carbonate in grams. Highest temperature reached by the reaction mixture in degrees Celsius. 
determine the gradient of the line of best fit in figure 3. So gradient they have given us change in highest temperature divided by change in mass. So to find this particular answer we are going to start first of all change in mass. Our change in mass as you can see is between 1 and 5. Our change in temperature this is 22.2 and this temperature is 28.6. The initial temperature of the reaction mixture is where the line of best fit would meet the y-axis. Determine the initial temperature of the reaction mixture. So for, the, for finding this answer, we'll have to extend this particular line so that it can meet the y-axis. Another student repeated the investigation but added sodium carbonate until the sodium carbonate was in excess. Which sketch graph show? Shows the result obtained when sodium carbonate was added until excess. If we add sodium carbonate until excess, our temperature increase will then plateau. So C should be the answer. Figure 4 shows a reaction profile for the reaction of sodium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. So we can see reactants, product, and we can see uh, overall energy change. So, X represent, on this side, X represent energy. How does the reaction profile show the reaction is exothermic? Product have less energy than reactants. So, we'll say level of product is below the level of reactants. This question is about different form of carbon. Figure 5 represents the structure of diamond. We can see diamond structure. Describe the structure and bonding of diamond. So diamond have a joint structure and we can see in the giant structure it, all, it also has a covalent bond. All right. And each carbon is bonded with four other carbons, carbon atoms. Explain why diamond has a very high melting point. Covalent bonds are very strong. And since diamond has many covalent bonds, so when melting it, we need to break a lot of covalent bonds. So a lot of energy is required to break those bonds. Figure 6 represents the molecule C70. We can see this is a fullerene and it's spherical. What is the name of this type of molecule? Molecules such as C70 can be used in medicine to move drugs around the body. Suggest one reason why C70 molecule is suitable for this use. C70 is hollow, so it can carry a medicine inside it. It's very unreactive. It's not toxic. It has a large surface area to volume ratio for delivering the drugs. Calculate the number of C70 molecules that can be made from one mole of carbon atoms. Avogadro constant shows us the uh, number of atoms within one mole of carbon atoms. To make C70 molecule, we will require 70, 70 atoms of carbon. Over to find it out, what we can do, we can divide 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 carbon atoms with 70. This will give us 8.6 into 10 to the power of 21. Now, since this particular question has three marks, there is a second method and I'm going to explain to you how it works. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to find moles of C70 from one mole of carbon. So one divided by 70, which gives us 0.01428 moles of C70. So now we're going to find molecules. Molecules of C70. So 0 0.0142857. Then we can multiply it by Avogadro constant. And the answer will be the same. So just write down that second. This question is about zinc and zinc compounds. A student produced pure crystals of zinc chloride by reacting zinc oxide with hydrochloric acid. You can see the equation over here. Student adds zinc oxide to hydrochloric acid until zinc oxide is in excess. Give one observation that the student could make to show that zinc oxide is in excess. So when zinc oxide will be added to the hydrochloric acid, it will react and it will dissolve. However, when excess will be added, then the zinc oxide will still remain after the reaction. Why is excess zinc oxide used rather than excess hydrochloric acid? We want to ensure so that all the hydrochloric acid is reacted. 
basically excess zinc oxide can be filtered off later on. Name one other compound that the student could add to hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride. So to produce zinc chloride, instead of zinc oxide, we can add zinc carbonate or we can add zinc hydroxide. Describe how the student could obtain crystals of zinc chloride from a solutions of zinc chloride. So the student can heat the solution until the crystallization point and then leave the solution to cool and crystallize. Zinc chloride is also produced in a displacement reaction between zinc and copper chloride solution. Zinc reacting with copper chloride producing zinc chloride and copper. Complete the ionic equation for this reaction. When zinc goes on the other side, zinc turns into Zn2+. So copper 2 plus must gain that electron that is given by the zinc. So the copper 2 plus will go on the other side and become copper metal. Why zinc is described as being oxidized in this reaction? Because the zinc is losing electrons, so we can say zinc is oxidized. Zinc and copper can be used with another substance to produce electricity. Complete figure 7 to show how zinc, copper and another substance can be used to light a lamp. So we can have zinc, copper, the other substance that is used and the symbol for light as shown. Guys, we need to complete this particular diagram. To complete the diagram, we need to you know, have two electrodes that will be immersed in a solution. One of the electrode would be zinc, the other electrode will be copper. This question is about groups in the periodic table. Elements in group 1 become more reactive down the group. Rubidium is below potassium in group 1. Rubidium and potassium are added to water. Predict one observation you would see that shows that rubidium is more reactive than potassium. So the moment rubidium will touch water, it will have vigorous bubbling and it will catch, you know, it will catch fire and produce a brighter flame. Rubidium's outer shell electron is farther away from nucleus because it is a bigger atom. So there is less electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the outer electron in rubidium. So the outer electron in rubidium can be easily lost. And since rubidium belongs to group 1, it just needs to lose one electron in order to do chemical reaction. So it becomes increasingly easier compared to potassium for rubidium to lose that outer shell electron. Complete the equation for the reaction of rubidium with water. So when rubidium reacts with water, it produces rubidium hydroxide plus hydrogen. So to balance this chemical equation, we have to count the number of hydrogen on the right hand side with the left hand side. So to balance that out, we can put a 2 here, which makes 4 hydrogen on the right hand side. And if we put a 2 in front of here, which makes 4 hydrogen on the left hand side. 2 oxygen is balanced and 2 rubidium is balanced by putting a 2 in front of this rubidium. Noble gases are in group 0. What is the correct statement about the noble gases? The noble gases all have atoms with 8 electrons in the outer shell. This is wrong because helium has only 2 electrons in the outer shell and yet a noble gas. The noble gases have boiling point that increases going down the group. Yes. So the boiling point of noble gases also increases going down the group because down the group the atom gets bigger. So they have more you know, uh, inter interatomic forces between them, all right, which we can say Van der Waals force of attraction. And this increases their boiling point. Noble gases have molecules with two atoms. No, they are monoatomic. Noble gases react with metals. They do not react with metals. So, second point. Table 1 shows the information about three isotopes of one. We can see their mass number and relative abundance. Now we are asked to calculate the relative atomic mass of neon. So the air of neon will be calculated in this way. We are going to multiply the mass number with their relative abundance. Then we are going to add and continue the process for the other ones. Then we are going to divide the whole thing by 100. And this gives us a value of 20.1877. But our question asks the answers in three significant figure. So we have to round it up to 20.2. So guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching the video up until this long.